So I'm trying my hand at vertical welding, and I had a viewer a long time ago suggested switching to 7014 rod, and I tell you what, I picked some up today, some 532nd, I grabbed the wrong box, always, always in a hurry, but um, I grabbed 10 pounds of it today, and I tell you what, I am highly impressed. It took me a little bit to kind of get the hang of it, definitely a rod that likes to be perfectly perpendicular to the work you're doing but we're actually getting some pretty nice beads and good penetration with it. And I'm finding the bigger rods actually go a lot longer for me than the, uh, the eighth inch rods. So what we have here, we have our two by two square stock, um, our tube welded to this side. We've got to do this one yet. And we're going to work on the die holder, what we're going to make to track it. I spent a lot of time sitting here staring and believe it or not, sweeping the floor. It's what I was just doing to get my thoughts collected here to make sure that uh, I have a good plan of action for these guides, because that's gonna be very important. If these guides start binding, things like that, it's gonna bend the frame up of this thing. It's not gonna press right. It's gonna be a real pain in the ass. Think of your wood splitter. This is kind of the same kind of thing, except for it's, it's vertical instead of horizontal. Uh, it's, it's still gotta track well. It's still gotta do all that right, because otherwise, I said we could bend the frame, we could bind the rams and end up bending the rams, which would mean no good, but there is definitely enough power there to do just that. So to recap, we have an inch worth of steel right here all welded together, our two by two square tube. We have two and a quarter inches of the, uh, the bottom die block of steel here. So we have a one inch plate welded onto an inch and a quarter plate two by two uh, square tube quarter inch wall. On the back side, we actually have uh, part of an I-beam that goes all the way down against here and it's welded solid. We, we're gonna put another two by two quarter inch wall square tube from the center of this down to the I-beam. Now, like I said before, it's not like you're transferring a load down to the floor. You're actually pushing against this and you're pushing against this at the same time. So it's all got to hold together. It's not actually transferring the load down to the floor like it would be, say, a power hammer or your anvil or something like that. So it's a little bit different that way. But um, I picked up a lot of the hydraulic parts today, hoses, fittings. I don't even want to tell you what I spent on fittings and hoses and stuff for this today and welding rod and I picked up a couple of lights to throw in the barn, but I spent more. I, I spent enough that makes a, you know my Scottish blood just kind of boil a little bit, thinking that I, I spent that kind of money. But we got to get this done. This will be our money maker. So anyway, without further ado, stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, I'll catch you on the other side of it. Now let's try to do some quality measuring here because you know I can't build anything square or true. I mean, we did all right with the barn, but this stuff I've always, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a, kind of shameful how out of whack I get this stuff sometimes.
Oh, what the frig? This coffee tastes like ass and cat food tonight. Who the hell put this in our house? I'm not friggin' Canadian. We don't smell that funny. Ugh. Okay, so here's where we are leaving it for tonight. I've got the guide frames welded up. They're not attached to this yet. I'm kind of uh, doing some thinking in my mind how I want to go about it. I Honestly, I'd rather weld it. Part of me says, yeah, go for it, weld it. It'll be super strong. The other part of me says, well, what if you ever have to take it apart and replace anything on it? How much of a pain in the ass is it going to be to grind it off or unbolt it? Do I sacrifice strength for bolts? I mean, I'm honestly, I'm probably going to weld it just because there's going to be so much pressure here on this thing that uh, I just don't want to take a chance of anything coming, uh, coming undone while I'm using it because that could create a dangerous situation. Um, so first time using 7014 rod tonight. Love it. Absolutely excellent. I did all the welding tonight with it. it definitely some learning curve involved for me, but um, it's going all right. So once we get this together, whether I bolt it, whether I weld it, as I said, I'm most likely going to weld it. Um, I do have a plan to hold the slides in place. I left just enough room that I could take that old cutting board uh, that material, those that style cutting board is is what they use in a lot of power hammer slides, things like that I've seen. And it actually wears really well. We're going to cut a little oil groove in all of them so we can keep everything kind of lubed up and, and going. That's actually pretty oil resistant. It's had chainsaw bar oil all over it for years. That thing's been out in the pit of despair for probably close to 10 years. But... Um, Hopefully it should hold up. Now, if it does not hold up for whatever reason, we will get brass shim stock and get it down to the thickness we need. I made these. These are going to be slightly thinner or slightly closer tolerance than that cutting board. We're going to try something. I'm going to try running strips of that through the planer and see what happens. It could be a total failure. It could ruin the planer. Who knows? But we're going to try it just to see what develops. But... Uh, Anyway, I think we're at a good spot to leave it tonight. This is turning out to be one solid, massive piece of equipment. I haven't even started on the other, the other portion, the other workstation yet, but uh, you know, this is one of those things where I'm better off taking my time and then I don't have to worry about and I'll be all just better off to take my time on something like this. I don't want anything here design wise that's going to fly apart on me while I'm using it or that's going to crack or break while I'm using it. The, um, I honestly, I have no trepidation about this frame at all. I honestly, this is heavier built than a lot of them I've seen on the old lube tubes. So. I mean, she's actually real heavy built. I tell you who builds a really, a real heavy one is uh, Coal Iron Forge. You ought to see the steel they put in those things. That's a big C-frame, but um, those are nice, nice presses. But uh, other than that, we'll see what happens. Now these slides here, this is all half inch plate. So and we also still have to do our gussets down here, which will run at least two in the middle. Maybe even one on the outside. We'll see what happens. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll catch you on the next one.